Welcome to a new vlog. For today's video I want to share with you some of the projects I currently have on my workbench. These are projects that still need some work to be done before they can be published but this will give you a glimpse of what to expect in the upcoming weeks on the channel. So I have these three projects currently on my workbench and this one uh, is a multi-channel thermocouple data logger and this device is based on an ESP32 as you can see with the footprint here. This has 10 channels based on the famous uh, Maxim thermocouple interfacing chips and all of those channels are read by the ESP32 and data can be logged on a uh, micro SD card. This uh, should help measure the temperature inside the T962 reflow oven that I reviewed a while ago and I want to measure in a grid to check how the heat is distributed inside the oven. I'm pretty sure there are some hot spots inside the oven and some cold spots. I don't know if there is anything I can do at the mechanical or design level to uh, correct for that but it would sure be nice to be able to know what's going on inside the oven and at least place future uh, boards that need to be reflowed in a certain area of the oven. And with such a board, I can do those measurements. I can connect 10 of these uh, uh, cheap K-type uh, braided thermocouples from AliExpress. And hopefully uh, I can get some consistent readings. But uh, more on this in a separate video after I manage to assemble and write some firmware for this board. The next project is an FTDA FT232HL uh, interface which I designed with the main purpose of allowing me to interface via JTAG to FBGA boards. The chip itself is capable of other protocols as well but my goal here is like I said to interface various FPGA boards. I plan to dip my toes into the FPGA world and try to get a blinky up and running on uh, one of these FPGA boards that I got from AliExpress. I have designed the board to include uh, a uh, voltage level translator because the chip is running at 3.3 volts but whatever you uh, connect on the JTAG uh, link might be running at 1.8 or 2.5 volts so there is provision for that and it uses USB type C like all of the boards that I have designed in the past year. And the third project is an ESP32 based CAN development board that I plan to use in my adventures of hacking the CAN bus of my VW car. Uh, I should be able to install this into my car to intercept, modify or send CAN messages while at the same time having uh, these two outputs which I can use to control various stuff with uh, on off uh, on the 12 volt power rail. It has a uh, onboard DC to DC converter to step down the car's 12 volts to 3.3 volts to power the board. And if I remember correctly, the chip was uh, chosen to have a wide input voltage range to accommodate for any potential spikes on the 12 volts uh, rail of the car. And as you can see, uh, I have various stuff attached to this board. I'm already working on the firmware of this. And all of these boards were manufactured by PCBWay.com, which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Volog channel. The boards came out great as expected, so I highly recommend you check out their website for your next project. They even have a service uh, now for CNC and 3D printing of prototypes, which I think it's pretty cool for the days we're living. I don't yet know if there are any bugs at the hardware level in the design of these boards. I have not tested them yet with the exception of the CAN board. I still need to write code for them to check that everything is okay and running as expected. Uh, but one by one they should all get their own video that describes them with a higher level of detail. And it's not only unwritten code that's stopping me from publishing these yet, but also the global chip shortage which has slowly made its way into the hobby sector. It's now harder and harder to find the required chips for these projects and as a hobbyist it doesn't really help if you find your chip at some, I don't know, obscure distributor from some distant place because they might have some minimum order uh, quantity and some shipping costs which can be highly prohibitive for these hobby projects so yeah there are also some missing chips that I still need to get which brings me to the question of the day have you been affected by the chip shortage uh, be it at work or maybe for your personal projects do you have bomb lines that cannot be ordered because they're out of stock everywhere let me know in the comments below 
as far as I can tell from the information available online, this is only going to get worse in the upcoming months before it starts to get better. That was all for today. Uh, it was just a short presentation of uh, these three upcoming projects. I would really appreciate your feedback in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing these projects published in greater detail. Uh, and as always, you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. And every time you smash that like button, you help the channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.